everybody. I have to say, Joseph, you are the man. Two men in my family were debating about who was going to have to do this, and <laughs> they were both trying to get out of it. So I just said to my husband, he's the man. So thank you very much for bringing that up here. I'd just like to say, you know, a really warm welcome to everybody here this morning. If you're visiting with us, you're really welcome. If you're joining us online, it is just so lovely to have you join us here this morning. And I know I've got some extended family visiting here this morning because um, one of our long-time church members turned 80 this week, and um, that is my mother. So yeah, I think that's great. We can give her a round of applause. Because <laughs> I think that's a pretty good achievement these days, isn't it? So yeah, happy birthday, Mum. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Tracy, and I'm just one of the regular church members here, so it's my um, privilege to um, relieve Jordan and Willie today and give them a little break and, and share a message with you. So I want to take you back just a little bit to January um, in 2017, and I decided, now I've left the clicker thing, so actually, there is something you can do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, January 2017, and I decided to take um, a road trip. Um, Now, in January of 2017, my oldest daughter was living and working in Australia, and Gavin was taking, my husband Gavin was taking our youngest two kids to a Pathfinder camporee. So that just left me and my, I don't know, how old were you five years ago? About 17, 18-year-old son at home, and I had some holiday. So we decided to take... Um, a road trip. Now, I think I've got a picture there. So we, I had a, I've got, we've still got it actually, the old white esteemer van. So we shoved some mattresses into the back of that and um, we put all our stuff in the seats underneath. That left us the two seats in the front and so off we went and we decided to go and check out the top of the South Island. Um, we had about a week that we were going to drive around there Now, I don't know whether you remember, and I think the children's story probably gave you a really good hint about what happened on the 14th of November um, 2016. It was the big um, Kaikoura earthquake, wasn't it? There was lots of damage done to the railway, the coastline, um, you know, just the sides of mountains and hills all all, um, came caving in. So we decided that while we were there, we went and stayed um, at Hamner Springs for a night, and we decided that we would drive into Kaikoura and just check out, see what we could see. Um, a lot of stuff had been started to be fixed, but um, and we couldn't go along the coastal road, wasn't open all the way in at that time, but we could go from Hamner Springs um, into um, Kaikoura. So as we were driving, and we were getting a little bit closer... Um, we were going down a really long straight road, a really long straight road, and and it was taking a little bit of a downward trend as well. So we could see the whole road, and then all of a sudden I said to Caden, look at that, that looks really weird. And all of a sudden, I don't know whether you've looked at a long straight road with the white line right down the middle, and all of a sudden, partway along the road, the right line, the white line's over here somewhere. So the white line had just taken a whole a whole shunt that way. And as we got closer, we could see that there was also not just had it gone sideways, but it had dipped down as well. So there was a height difference in the road. Now, by this point, they had repaired the road, um, so we could still travel on it. But just that striking image of the centre line having just moved right off to the side was the, the first thing that we saw as we came into that earthquake damaged area. Now, as I started um, preparing this message um, to share with you, it was quite some months ago, and it was actually part of the, um, I don't know whether you recall, the House to House series that, um, that we had when we were still, I think we were still in lockdown, we were still on, online. Um, so we were looking then at the book of Acts. So we, have, we were focused then on that and the Gospels. And I think for a group of people, if we go back just a little bit from the book of Acts to the end of the Gospels, for a group of people that the centre line had just all of a sudden really shifted, right? They had thought they were on this path. They had thought they were on this path with Jesus to overturning the Romans to to coming into power again, and what they thought was going to happen had all of a sudden just changed. Jesus had died, their leader, their miracle worker, 
he had um, just sort of been cut off abruptly from them. They were really devastated by the death of their leader, despite Jesus telling them on numerous occasions what was to come. So here they were, completely devastated and lost. And I imagine, I imagine it might have been a little bit too like those cows. I don't know whether you've ever experienced this, those cows stuck on this little island. I don't know whether they, in their minds and in their thoughts, went in circles around and around and around. How can this be? Where do I go from here? How do I get from this place to where I need to be? So I want you to imagine yourselves, if you can this morning, as one of those disciples. You've given up your job. Your expectation is that you're going to be one of the leaders in a new kingdom. That those Romans that you despise so terribly, they're going to be gone, forgotten. You're going to be the one in power now. Um, You've built your whole life now around this miracle working leader, and he's just died. I think that's a place... um, that we too can find ourselves in in life, right? Sometimes we can find ourselves in a place where that centre line... Have I been clicking through things? Sorry. Um, Oh, sorry. No, I haven't. Thank you, Michael. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that we we've can find ourselves in a place where that centre line has all of a sudden just shifted or maybe a place where we feel just a little bit stuck, a little bit trapped, we're just not sure where to from here, um, how to get to the next place. And I don't know about you, but I think maybe the last few years those feelings have been a little bit more prevalent. Maybe the rhythm, rhythm of our life has been interrupted, our, sh- our social connections have been disrupted, and maybe even how we see the world has been a little bit challenged. As I was preparing this message um, to share with you, I really found myself sort of in that situation. Um, Each direction I sort of came to, I wasn't sure. I didn't know where to go, what to say, you know, what what was the purpose of this message, and that was really how I felt. Now, as I'm going to share a little bit throughout this morning, sometimes the advice I get from my family is helpful and sometimes it's sort of not, Um, but I shared this with my husband that I didn't know what should I say, what should I share etc, etc, and his comments were this, that I should not have any problems with anything to say as I was not a woman of a few words. Um, But, (laughs) so I don't know whether that was helpful or not. But it was a few months, so it was, this was when we were still meeting online that I was um, trying to prepare this. And we were coming to this point that I had to have something to ready to record in a couple of days' time. And I was driving home really late at night. I'd been in delivery suite for about 14 hours. That's what I do for a job. I'm a midwife. So I'd been in there for about 14 hours. I was really, really exhausted. I had this couple of days to go until I needed to put something onto, onto record. And I just said to God, I've got nothing to say. What am I going to say? I don't know. Sometimes I think your conversations, when you're really, I find for me, when I'm really tired, I can, you know, my conversations with God are quite honest <laughs> and quite frank. And, you know, I felt God's response to me at that time. And he said, that's perfect. Now that you've figured out you've got nothing to say, I do. <laughs> So, now I know God's timing is perfect, and I know he didn't wish COVID upon me, and that was, he didn't cause me to have, get COVID, but I think the next day I tested positive for COVID, and so I didn't record that message, and I thank Jordan for stepping in at that time, and then a few other life, um, life dramas came along as well, and again, I didn't get to share this message, um, but I know that God's timing is perfect, and that he can work all things together for good. So I don't know who this message is here for this morning. It's not anything complicated, no deep theological thinking too much here this morning or anything, but I know that God can use any situation, and I know that God's timing is perfect. So there is somebody here that this message is for this morning. So I would like to just take us through, I don't know, do you like easy recipes like four ingredients? four-step recipe, just some four steps to navigating life, not just in the challenging times, but in the ordinary, everyday parts of our life as well. 
So I thank you so much, Alicia, for your special item this morning. Because once again, Alicia, she was so graciously prepared that for our online service that I was supposed to do months and months ago. And I just wanted to share that with you this morning because the first thing, the first ingredient that we're going to look at this morning is look to Jesus. So that was what the song was about, looking up. You know, we often think about looking up, don't we, when we think of looking to Jesus. But I want to suggest to you this morning that we can look all around us as well. We can see Jesus in some of the people around us, right, in nature, and all sorts of things around us, and in, in, in the way he can lead us in our lives as well. So whether your road is straight, whether you're stuck on an island, or whether life is all peachy, um, The first part here is look to Jesus. Now, it's okay, I want to suggest to you this morning, that it is okay to feel a little bit lost, and it's okay to feel that you're just not sure where to go or what to do next. It's okay to feel that way if you take the next step and look to Jesus. We have this group of disciples, right, that were devastated at the loss of Jesus. And they went and locked themselves away. They went and locked themselves away because they, I think they were probably a bit afraid that they were next, that their heads were next on the chopping block, so to speak. So what does it mean, if we look at this word, look to Jesus, what does it mean to look to Jesus? I think... For me this morning, looking to Jesus means that we have realized that we can't do it on our own. We have recognized a need of his leading and that we are ready to put ourselves aside um, and then we are looking to look to him and to seek God. Now, when I think of scripture and when I think of um, looking to God, this came to mind. Now, I think most of you are probably aware that um, my husband and I and our youngest daughter are moving to Queenstown coming up soon, so I've been doing lots of looking at real estate. Um, And I came across this picture. Now, I don't know whether you can see just through the skylights what you can just see up through the skylights there in that picture, but there's some snowy mountains. And when I saw that, unfortunately, this house had already sold, but um, I just thought that just came to mind, that scripture, um, scripture there that says... I look to the mountains, does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. So that is um, our first scripture. Now, I've got, I came last night to build something with Lego and came to the very quick realisation that we had never ever bought our children any normal Lego. We'd bought them all these fancy, you make this and that, so there was no normal shaped blocks. But fortunately, Phoebe had this in her classroom, so I was able to grab that. And I did make a diagram up just in case we couldn't. So I'd just like this to represent our lives sort of thing. And up there, I've got the white blocks at the bottom. We didn't have any white blocks. But the white blocks sort of represent those everyday, the things you don't think about in life, right? The mundane bits of life. Um, And then we have just the everything's going cruisy is the green. We have the yellow, some highlights there. And then we have either some blue or grey moments when when, when we're feeling a bit down, when things aren't going so well. And then we have the really intense problems, the challenges that we face is the red. Now, I think often in life, I, I don't know about you, but often in life, sometimes we have habits, right, of... We look to God when we get to the pointy end of things. We look to God when we get to the bits that's really difficult and challenging. And we don't sometimes have those good habits when life is, is down here, um, when life is ordinary, when life is boring, um, etc. But if we, just, if we turn our pyramid there upside down, if, if we are in a place that we only get to looking to God when we're in these bits, right, is that... Kids down the, our juniors down the front, is that going to stand up really well? Which way stands up the best? This way. So if, if we can get into some habits and if we can find a way that we can, we can look to God throughout, because, you know, he's interested in not just the, the scary things that are happening for us, the really difficult things that are happening for us. He's interested in the ordinary, the everyday, Every, every decision, all the things that we are doing. He's interested in being a part of all of that. And, 
And I think, too, if we look to him for those decisions, we might find ourselves not in this bit quite so much either if we've involved him way back here. So that's just something I just wanted to um, share with you this morning, to just remember to look to God, not just when it seems too hard, but look to God in everything, in everything that you are doing in life. Right, so I'll pop that down there. So kids, maybe the kids this afternoon, if you've got some actual proper Lego at home, you might want to make a pyramid and show mum and dad um, your pyramid this afternoon. You might want to change the colours around um, and, and share that. Okay, so we've done the looking, right? We've, we have looked to God and we're coming to the next bit now. So the next bit is to wait on him. Now, I'm not very good at waiting, and I suspect I'm not the only person here that would fall into that category. But here again, we see Jesus' disciples, they had been given instructions in um, the first chapter of Acts there, and Jesus said to them, so by this point, he's risen from the dead, he spent some time with them, and he says to them there, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak. So... Waiting. Now, what comes to mind when you think about waiting? I have two things that came to mind when I thought about waiting. One of them was waiting for one of my children in particular, and it was not one of the girls, believe it or not. But right from primary school age, he has always been the last one out of the house, um, and we have always been waiting for him. In fact, even this week, I heard a sister calling out to him, I won't say his name, but, you know, the second boy, um, <laughs> you're going to be late. Um, and he could just never hurry. The other thing I think about is waiting um, on hold. I'm sure that's something we've always all experienced recently, being on hold for a long, long time. We've had a few vehicle changes in our house recently, and... Um, the son, who is we're always waiting for, we had a new car I needed to get insured the other day. And so I phoned up. And you get the messages, you know, when you phone that there's more than expected call volumes, it's going to take a while. So I'm on hold for about half an hour. And so I'm carrying on my whatever I'm doing at home. I was in the office for a bit, then I think I went out and weeded the garden. And all of a sudden, I get this this person talking, but it was a voice message, someone saying, giving you a message to leave a message. And then before I could leave, the mes leave a message, before it got to the beep, it hung up. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to have to start again. So I phoned back again, and I spent about another half an hour online. And you know, the music's playing. You all know what I'm talking about, don't you? The music's playing. And then all of a sudden, the music stops. And I'm like, oh, oh, is someone there? And I said, hello, hello. And I hear this, this, this man on the other end say, hello, hello. I'm like, oh, hello. And, I, and he's like, oh, hello. And I'm like, this doesn't seem quite right. And I said to him, is this ASB Insurance? And he's like, oh, are you a customer? I said, yeah, I'm a customer. And he said, yeah, so am I. <laughs> and I said, I'm trying to get car insurance. He said, yeah, me too. <laughs> and he said, I was just talking to somebody about it, and they said they'd put me on hold while they went away and did something, and then somehow he ended up talking to me. I said, I said to him, well, what should we do now? I said, I suppose we just have to hang up and phone back again. I said, but I've already been waiting on hold for a really, really long time. And he said, me too. <laughs> anyway, there was really nothing else. I mean, how you're talking to this other person, you have no way of connecting yourself with anybody else. So in the end, hung up and phoned back for the third time. And I don't know whether they believed me when I said I've actually just been talking to another customer. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but anyway, these are the sort of things I think about. It, you, waste of time waiting often, isn't it? It feels like a real waste of time. Um, and often boring. And yeah, we're not very patient these days either. But I think waiting on God or waiting for God is a little bit different than waiting on hold for an insurance or waiting for a child to be ready, that sort of thing. Waiting for God, I think, has great value. 
And there are so many scriptures, like I'm going to share a few, and um, we've got some of the juniors that are going to share some with us this morning. But if you want something to do on a Sabbath afternoon or an evening or sometime, just look up some scriptures that talk about waiting on God. There's a, there are a lot of them. So I'm going to share with you four things that I think are really helpful and four things that we can that are useful for us whilst we're waiting on God. So I think we're going to share some scriptures with you, and the juniors have kindly agreed to help me. So I think Caleb and Sana, you've got our first couple of voice, um, scriptures. If you want to grab a mic and come up here with me, that would be great. So I've got a picture up there, um, and see if you can figure out what, the, um, what these scriptures um, might share with us. Right, thank you, Sana. Micah 7, verse 7. But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the, for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Psalm, Psalm 27, verse 8. My heart, ha, my heart ha, has heard you. Come and talk with me. My, and my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Thank you, guys. Okay, you can sit. Yeah, thank you. Pop those back there. Um, so those are scriptures, aren't they, that are talking about this communicating and building relationship with God. And I just love that um, one that Caleb shared there, where, it's, where, where David is saying, I heard, my, I, heard, I heard my heart heard you say, come and talk with me, and my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So it just gives us an opportunity to build relationship and to communicate with God. Okay, I've got the next picture, and I think Annabelle and Caitlin might have these scriptures for us. What does that look like? Any other kids out there? What do you think that looks like? Yeah. Okay, let's um, share these scriptures with you and see what you think that they might indicate. Thank you. Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Psalms 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you, girls. So... Um, those scriptures share with us, don't they, that waiting on God is an opportunity to build and renew our strength. Now, I think the next one is mine. So here we go. Um, Psalm 25, 5. It says there, lead me in your truth and teach me. For you, the God of my salvation, for you I will wait all the day. So waiting on God gives us here an opportunity for teaching and growth and a space for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. And then the last one, I think Matthew's got that one to share with us. Thank you, Matthew. Psalms 37, verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Cool, thank you. And the verse goes on there, and the next, the next words say, do not fret, and I really like that as well. So waiting on God here gives us a space for rest. So waiting is a little bit different than what we might have initially th thought. And I saw somewhere written the other day, it said there that this waiting on God was an active, not a passive process, and that the word wait in Scripture means to Wait actively with anticipation, watching for God to act. I think often we don't realise the value of that time of waiting until it's, we're in hindsight. Often we don't see, we don't see right at the time the, the work that God is doing in our lives. And I can certainly relate to that. I can think of a time probably about 20, 20 or more years ago now um, where it was a time in my life where I had come to a point of surrender and there were big changes going on and I felt that God just took me away to another place for, for a short space of time where there was really nothing else happening at all and it was a time that he could, he could teach me, he could give me a time to renew my strength and, and equip me for the next step and that's what he wants to do for us in that waiting time is equip us for what is um, to come next. So, as I said before, here we see the disciples waiting for the Holy Spirit. 
And I really appreciate the last song that um, everybody shared, uh, that the worship team shared with us, because they were sitting there waiting for the Holy Spirit, and today we need the Holy Spirit as much as ever, uh, as ever we did before, both as individuals but as a, as a church body as well. So I would just encourage you, I know that sometimes the waiting feels, you know, waiting, waiting, we don't, we don't like that, but just Enjoy that time of waiting. Don't wish it away, but instead immerse yourself in it and embrace, embrace what's happening and allow God to, to work in your life in that time. So the next word we come to, and now so we've had the two ingredients. So we are looking to Jesus, waiting on him, and then we are going to follow his lead. Now, I, I did just check out what does it mean to follow, um, and it can have quite a few different meanings, but the things that the main things that I sort of came up with there were that it was to to go after or come after, to strive after, to go in the same direction, to act according to an instruction, or to pay close attention to something. So following God, I think, is fulfilling God's purpose in our lives, right? Both as individuals and as a church. The whole purpose is our whole purpose, really, as individuals and as a church, is to follow Christ. Um, in the Acts of, of the Apostles, Ellen White describes the purpose of the church to serve and to carry the gospel to the world. And she goes on to say that those who have been called out of darkness are to show forth his glory. Now, I don't know whether you've had any experience. It doesn't happen so much these days because we type an address into our our phone or our GPS or whatever, and it takes us somewhere. But have you ever had a friend say, oh, just follow me. We're just going this way. Follow me. Now, your friend happens to be driving like a white, pretty standard, everyday car, and you get in the car and you start following them and they get a little bit ahead of you. There's quite a few, bit of traffic. And then you're like, no, I think that's them. They just went right. And you, follow, you find yourself following not the right white car, and you find yourself um, in the wrong place. Now, that can happen too in our Christian walk, right? We can find ourselves following the, the um, sometimes it's not even a person, but the wrong thing. Um, and I wanna, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about following today because I think that if, number one, you've looked to Jesus, and then number two, you've waited on him, the following is what comes sort of naturally. And we can see that in the lives of the disciples, what happened after the Holy Spirit had came upon them, what after they had locked themselves in that room, they had recognized that they had nothing to offer, they had surrendered, they had then done the waiting, and what happened after that? They went out and spoke with great power, didn't they? The church grew phenomenally, and, um, and they were able to then follow um, the, true, the true path that Jesus had set out for them and the true way he had shown them um, how to live. So maybe this morning just do a little self-check-in um, and just ask yourself the question, are you looking to Jesus? Have you recognized your need of him? Have you surrendered? Number two, have you waited on him? Have you spent that time allowing God to mould and shape you? And if the answer to either of those things is no, I'm going to suggest you do a quick U-turn and just, just turn around. Because if we have not done either of those two things, just ask the question, who or what are you following? And I think... Um, this is where religion can become really dangerous, um, both, both as a group or individuals as well, who claims to be following Christ but hasn't actually surrendered, looked to Christ, and hasn't then spent that time allowing Christ to mould him, hasn't spent that time um, being able to, to become more like Christ and let him do the things that he wants to do in their lives. So... We can, I think that we can then find a group or individuals completely misrepresenting God. And I just want to, you know, apologise to anybody who's experienced that in any um, religious organisation or church community or anywhere, that if you've experienced that. But just for each of us as individuals to do a little check-in and just say, hey, have I surrendered? Am I looking to God? 
Have I spent that time waiting on him? Have I allowed him to work in my life? Have I allowed him to change the things about me that need changing and mould me into what he wants me to be? So, yeah, I think that that waiting really does equip us there to show forth his glory, right, as we follow him. Now, the last ingredient um, is probably almost one of the most important as well, actually, and that is this, to repeat again and again and again. This is really, really important. Like, if, if you're here today and you, you know, um, looking to Jesus, Christianity, this whole thing is really new for you, then I'd encourage you to you know, take that step and, and look to Christ and allow him to work in your life. But if you've done that before, I just want to say this, it is not a one-off event, right? This is an everyday thing. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely a work in progress. Um, and so, you know, it's not, I remember... I'm trying to think how long ago it was, quite a long time ago. But I got baptised here in this very church. I think in those days we bought a, like a, what do you call them, a font? A little pool over here. And I was a teenager and I was baptised here. And that wasn't just the one-off, right, I've looked to Jesus now, I've waited on him, now I'm going to follow without ever going back and looking to Jesus again and waiting on him and looking to Jesus again and waiting on him and looking to Jesus again and waiting on him. So it's not backwards to go back to the beginning again. It's, it's like that perpetual motion, right, that we just keep going. And I found this picture and I quite liked it because... Our lives are not just one-dimensional either, are they? So there might be this area of my life that I need to look to Jesus and wait on him in this area, whilst I've got this area going on over here, and this area over here, and then this thing here, and I've had this before. And so we've just got this, this lovely picture of circles. They're not perfect circles, um, and sometimes our journeys just aren't perfect or even circular in, in many regards. But just this picture of so many areas of our lives of, of looking to Jesus again and again and again. Now, I, this is another time I asked for some advice from my family. And some of it was useful and some of it wasn't. So I said, I, how should I end? How should I finish this message that I'm going to give? And I got one reply was, make it a cliffhanger. Just sit down. <laughs> no ending, it's a cliffhanger. I thought, mm, not sure about that. Um, <laughs> the other advice I got was don't do a summary of a summary of a conclusion of a conclusion. It was like, keep it brief. And, and, and I thought, actually, I'm going to take that advice. Thank you, daughter. Um, I'll take your advice over your father's for this one, I think. Um, because this is not complicated. This is... Whilst, you know, it, the journey is often difficult, it's not complicated, if that makes sense. It's simple, right? This is simple. So, so in summary, this is what I would like to share with you. Look to Jesus, wait on him, follow his lead, and then repeat again and again and again. Thank you. God bless. <laughs>